I'd like to talk to you today about a miracle. But first, like you do, realize the complexity of your own hands, right? Take a look just for a moment. Wiggle your hands. Understand how sophisticated they are and how much they've walked you through life, right? How much you've done with them. The hand, the human hand, is a remarkable piece of engineering, right? That blends complexity, elegance, and is remarkably durable, uh, strong, and yet sensitive. People that lose their hands through, through no choice of their own, through trauma or disease, have their life's trajectory spin off in a, in a direction they couldn't have otherwise predicted and is always tragic. And unfortunately, this kind of accident often happens to the most daring and adventurous of us. Yet, the solutions we have for them are inadequate. The devices simply don't meet the natural requirements of the human hand. They don't move like a human hand. They don't touch our loved ones like a human hand. And they don't allow us to continue life as we would have otherwise. I'd like to introduce to you some real people um, that have real needs. This is Perry. He is a United States Army veteran who fell in a catastrophic injury, injuring his right hand, ultimately resulting in its loss, an amputation. In front of him is his dog, Gaia, his best friend. Uh, he is our most recent research participant and a great guy. We feel that we need to restore him to his full self. Secondly, I want to introduce you to another young patient of mine. Her name's Kayleen. She was climbing uh, not too far from here. She's an intrepid climber and was belaying Josh when he fell. She was able to arrest his fall Unfortunately, though, a boulder, a one-ton boulder, came down from 50 feet and severed her left arm and left leg. She survived, and she's a champion. And for these champions, we need tools that, re that, that meet their needs and that rise to their level of achievement and performance. Unfortunately, we don't have those tools. We have this tool that has been around for 100 years. We need more, and this is not good enough. I have the opportunity to work at the University of Utah uh, Neural Interface Lab at the VA hospital, helping both civilian and veteran populations have access to this kind of technology and devices. We are designing solutions that will restore the human capacity for motion and for sensation. To do that, we have to remember how the brain operates. The brain develops thoughts. Those thoughts are transduced into electrical intellectual currents that go down the spinal cord into the arm and then they're parsed into the muscles where they're then amplified. And then it's that pattern of muscles that we use that are, cause specific motions. We do this unthinkingly. Therefore, prosthetics need to be intuitive. We implant devices um, called electrode arrays that have 32 platinum leads that go into the muscles of the forearm to extract from them their electrical current to know what patterns we're attempting to generate. And then we correlate that with motion, either in virtual or real, real hands, real prosthetic hands. That is the first part. We hope to create dexterous motion, and I'll show you that we do in just a moment. The hallmark of this, and, and just looking at it, is that it has some features of naturalism in the movement, and that every movement between every grasp is different, and every release is different just as we do everything differently, right? We never grab one object the same pretty much any, any time. And so it, it meets the variability of life and our requirements. But that's not all. Motion alone is simply not enough. As anybody who's ever tried to open a door with cold hands and tiny keys can attest, sensation informs every bit of our motion. We have access to um, nerve implants developed at the, at the University of Utah Black Rock Systems that can be implanted into the residual nerves, the nerves that remain above the level of injury, so that we can speak in the native electrical language of the nerve from a sensorized prosthetic hand. So the way it works is a finger of the prosthetic hand touches a, a surface that results in a signal that goes to the computer that converts that into the native language of the nerve and routes it to one of those electrode tips. And then the person feels that electricity go all the way up their body in the exact channel that it would have had they have had their normal natural sensors on their hand and right to the area of the brain that is salient. They feel sensation, 
feel pressure, vibration. They don't feel pain. It reduces phantom pain, in fact. What I'd like to show you here is a gentleman that hasn't felt from either arm, both arms are lost, for 27 years. This is in a virtual environment with sensation turned on. It's an unscripted event, and I need to share it with you. Is it how's it going to Can you feel the finger sliding when you do that? Yeah, actually I can. Bring it on her. God, that is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think this sign was unintentional at the end, but he was pretty excited. <laughs> Just giving you kind of the layout and technical specifications, the, the engineer's dream, we can cover 120 total sensations or areas on the hand uh, that correlate to pressure, vibration, and joint movement so that when you close your eyes, you can feel where your hand is in space. And again, no pain. Uh, the, the microarrays are about four millimeters by four millimeters, and you fit about eight of them on a penny. The magic really happens, though, when you combine advanced motor control with sensory feedback, rich sensory feedback. That's when you start to have a closed loop that replicates the way that we've grown up to expect how to use our hands. We result in task completion times for moving things and to performing tasks at 30% faster. It's also more intuitive, it's easier, and things are more secure, which turns out to be the most important uh, prerequisite for people with limb loss. They want to make sure that that iPhone doesn't drop to the floor as they're distracted. And lastly, in a surprise to us, it allows them to perform entirely novel tasks. Um, and I'd like to just show you two right here. He went on to eat the whole bowl of cantaloupe. <laughs> and the second was, was, was things that we asked him about. What, what do you feel that you would really want to do if you had carte blanche to really try anything? And he did this. He was happy, we were overjoyed, and his wife was ecstatic. But seriously, he's able to feel the cloth and make sure it wasn't slipping under his grip due to restored sensation. What else we discovered is people embody it as part of their body. This is, again, an unscripted opportunity. He described what he wanted to do. Is there anything you want to grasp that you, that you see? I want to clasp my hands. You can clasp your hands together. It became a part of his body. Working with it, he described that it felt like a part of him. What's remarkable of this uh, is that we're moving from out of the lab to going to, to take home products in, in, the, in the home environment. We're still wired, but we are starting to see its efficacy at home and how it makes lives easier. Perry has tried these type of tasks before in the past with conventional top of the line $50,000 prosthetic arms and has been unsuccessful in achieving them. Thank you. Ah! <laughs> you didn't hit the floor. Thank you. <laughs> right? So he's absolutely excited about the possibilities, and so am I. The ability to restore sensation and advanced motor control through interfacing with the muscles and nerves um, inherently improves the function, sense of self, and restores a person to their normal state. Right? What this does is an answer to the hopes and prayers of many that have limb loss. And it also potentially removes the specter of disability from future generations of children that are born for whatever reason without a limb. 
I am so grateful to be involved in their lives and in the ability to generate this kind of technology that should be transformative and will only continue to grow over the, the next decade and further. Thank you for your attention.